Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Red Game Citicom video, we are going to be, as usual, discussing a plethora of tech news which has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to be starting things out with Radeon RX Vega 56, because some benchmarks have leaked, and shows the card is absolutely kicking the ass of the GTX 1070. Then we're going to briefly go over the TDP of the Threadripper 1920, but then the last focus of the video is going to be on the Coffee Lake, because... We have full details of the 300 series chipset and what we're going to be seeing from Intel's latest and possibly greatest line of processors. But, as I said, we're going to start things out with the Vega 56, also known as the GTX 1070 Killer, at least according to TweakTown.com. I can't really give credit to just one individual for sending me this story because so many of you have emailed me or Facebook messaged me over the past few, well, you know, hours alone, let alone over the last day. So, anywho, um, I'm going to report this as they are. So, I'm going to make the assumption that his source, uh, Anthony, uh, is accurate. Obviously, I don't know whether it's false or, you know, not, but we'll make the presumption it is. I'm going to try and do a bit more in-depth analysis over the next few days. But anyway, um, so apparently... It looks like this card, which for those who don't know is going to retail at 400 US dollars, is going to absolutely demolish the GTX 1070 according to these benchmarks. Now, a couple of caveats. Firstly, is this accurate? I don't know. Second thing, and perhaps the most obvious, well, yeah, it's only a few games. Anyway, enough of stalling. Let's talk about this, shall we? Because there's Battlefield 1, Civilization 6, Doom, and COD Infinite Warfare. So, these benchmarks were conducted on a Core i7 7700K running at 4.2 GHz, so there's no crazy overclocking, and 16 GB of DDR4, uh, 3000 MHz RAM, so obviously it's a pretty standard system, not too crazy or anything like that, pretty standard gaming affair, and of course running Windows 10. So the benchmarks were run at 2560 by 1440 so, as I said, um, the benchmarks were conducted using Battlefield 1, which was uh, Ultra Settings, Civ 6 was Ultra and MSAA times 4, Doom with Ultra with T, uh, 8 times TSAA, and finally COD Infinite Warfare with its highest preset quote. So, enough of that. What about the results? Well, Battlefield 1, 95.4, accordingly the GTX 1070 in the same benchmark got 72.2, Civilization 6, 85.1, the GTX 1070 again got 72.2, I don't know if that's a typo or not, I'll presume not, Doom, 101.2 FPS average, I don't know if that is with Vulcan, love to know if that's with Vulcan, that means that you're getting GTX 1070 performance of 84.6, which is not bad, and finally, COD Infinite Warfare, essentially 100 frames a second, okay, 1F, 0.1 FPS lower. And the GTX 1070 gets 92.1, so okay, the Golf is not that big there. However, I'm pretty sure you'll agree that the it's almost a chasm between Doom and Battlefield and the GTX 1070. In fact, it's about 20% on Doom alone, whereas 32% with Battlefield, which is pretty damn big. I mean, that's not quite up to GTX 1080 levels, but it's not that far behind. So there are numerous questions one could ask of these results. Perhaps the most obvious are AMD sandbagging right now. Pretty, pretty obvious question, and I'm going to ask it for you. Are they sandbagging? Unfortunately, I don't know. I could bullshit you. I could say, well, you know, if we look at this and we look at that and we look at the history and we start looking at these graphs and it, ultimately we just don't know because it's not in the hands of the reviewers yet. It's possible, to be honest, that even AMD don't know the final results of Vega right now because it's possible that they're still tweaking. I can tell you as a reviewer who has reviewed uh, products from uh, companies, not Vega, just want to stress that I will be getting Vega, but I don't have a review sample yet of Vega. But I can tell you, honestly, that companies tell you all the time there's a new driver coming, there's a new driver coming. In fact, I actually had to retest at least two products, quite literally. In fact, that's why there's been a delay a couple of times, because I had the results. I was just about to start editing the video, and then a company was like, by the way, we've released a new BIOS, or by the way, we've released a new driver. 
Okay, I'm sure that's not going to make that much difference, you think. <laughs> Your results are basically useless because they've improved performance like 10, 15, 20, 25%, which obviously means you can't publish the old results because you're A, going to be misrepresenting that product, and B, you're also going to have viewers be like, uh, dude, why are your results at like 67 frames per second and everyone else's results are like 78? That looks a bit suspicious. Are you, you know, are you doing that purposefully or whatever? So it's possible that even AMD don't know the final results for these cards. It's also possible that, as I said, they're purposefully sandbagging or it's possible that these games just really, really, really like the Vega architecture or there's something else going on. It's also, of course, possible that these results are a load of BS. Which one is it? I don't know. Tune in a couple of weeks, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, real quick thing regarding the Ripper of Threads. So, apparently, the Thread Ripper 1920 is going to have a TDP of just 140 watts, which isn't bad. It's not shabby. That is comparative comparison wise. Um, it's uh. 180 watts, yeah, that's right, 180 watts for the 1920X. So the 1920 standard has a TDP of just 140 and 40 watts more, once again, for the 1920X. And apparently the base clock and the boost clock are slightly different as well. The base clock is 3.2 compared to 3.5, and the 4 gigahertz for the turbo compared to 3.8. I just realised I said uh, boost clocks, and that's not the right terminology at all for processors. Oh dear. Anyway, um, what was I going with this? Oh yes, we were going to be talking about our friend and buddy Coffee Lake. I'm going to make the assumption that just for a second you don't know the latest news. I'll quickly go over it. I did cover this yesterday. Apparently, according to ASRock anyway, if you've got a 200 series board, you're boned if you want to upgrade to Coffee Lake. In other words, you're going to have to buy a new motherboard. If you want more information on that, you can check out yesterday's video. But essentially, the too long didn't read. You need a 300 series board. So, you're going to say to yourself, A, screw you Intel, which I can't blame you too much. Although, obviously, we don't know if there's a reason behind that other than I want money. And the other one is, what other features do you get? Well, there are a couple of cool things. Um, you'll notice, and I'll pop the slides on screen, so I'm going to tell you some of the pertinent things. Although, you can probably read along with me. Apparently, it has support for up to six processor cores. I do wonder if that was the issue with the older 200 series or below. I don't know. I, I do wonder if it, it, it just couldn't handle it for whatever technical reason. Um, you can also quite clearly see a Socket 11 uh, LGA 1151. I'm sure that's going to confuse people. Enthusiast TDP at 95 watts, corporate slash mainstream 65, low power at 35. Perhaps most tellingly, 24 PCIe 3.0 lanes and up to 10 USB 3.1s with the usual caveats of, uh, you know, up to 6 ports with USB 3.1, which is 10 gigabytes per second if that's Gen 2. Rapid uh, storage technology, 16 PCIe 3. You've got 4 times storage support, CPU attached to Intel uh, PCIe storage. Moving on to the key features, well, obviously, you've got 6, 4, and 2 core support, up to DDR4 2666. I'm going to make the presumption that, obviously, some motherboards will allow you to go high if you're overclocking. Um, integrated USB 3.1 Gen 2, uh, 10 gigabits per second, uh, Intel wireless connector, Thunderbolt 3, uh, Titan Ridge, which might be interesting to you. New next generation Optane, uh, Optane memory, once again, not necessarily going to be helpful to everyone, but I can see how some people will find it helpful. Um, and that's pretty much it. I mean, I could read out more stuff, but I'm pretty sure you can probably see the key points yourself. And we can also see from the roadmap that the first family of these will be the arriving on the KB Lake refresh chipset, which is known as the Z370. And then the second family will be arriving on the Canon Lake PCH, also known as the Z390. And these include other SKUs as well. So, of course, this includes the H, the B, and the Q suffixes. Wait, well, that's nice and complex, isn't it, Intel? Um, I'm quite interested in this processor lineup. I'm just kind of scrolling through the uh, various uh, uh, leaflets now, if you will. And apparently... We're looking at a production window between the 34th and the 31st, 40, the 34th and the 41st week of 2017. So, in other words, we're looking at a launch between October and August. Well, that was the reverse way of saying that, wasn't it, really? So, in other words, it's probably not going to be too long. Um, 
for a too long didn't read, by 2018, at some point, you should see pretty much all of these SKUs available on store shelves, and it shall be possibly glorious. I mean, in theory, these look really good for gamers, if nothing else. There is also one small last bit of news regarding um, the uh, Coffee Lake processors, and this is popping up from Chinese forums, which is an i3-8300 4-core 8-thread processor. So this actually originates, accordingly anyway, from NGA, and this is basically Taiba Beidou, and it looks like, um, see, basically it was a poster on NGA, but the original image is from Taiba Beidou, so the image may be fake. I'm not saying it is, but it could be fake. I'm bringing it to your attention, just so you know, but apparently this means that, in theory, we could have a 4-core 8-thread processor which is an i3, which is pretty nuts, considering that that's going to be like, you know, around the 100-ish US dollars, 100 to 200 US dollars. That's an awful lot of performance. If Intel were to do that, well, that's fantastic, honestly. I would actually be really, really impressed by that. I'm not saying they would do that, because I imagine it would probably scupper some of the highest SKUs. Don't forget, we also see the 8700K, um, and i5s, apparently the i5s are said to be 6 cores uh, with no uh, hyper threads in theory. So it, it's kind of weird at the moment and the exact lineup and how they're going to be putting all this stuff together is still a bit of a mystery. Hey, you know what? If we get 4 cores, 8 threads from i3, I'm pretty happy with that and uh, I would I would say that that's a pretty good going from Intel. And let's face it, the company do need a couple of positive wins at the moment in the PR department, so maybe they would. I don't know. All of that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.